Achondrogenesis is a group of rare skeletal dysplasias characterized by extreme shortening of the arms and legs in relation to the trunk, abnormal development of ribs, vertebra, and other skeletal abnormalities. Nortriptyline HCL is used to treat mental mood problems such as depression. This medication belongs to a class of medications called tricyclic antidepressants. It works by affecting the balance of certain neurotransmitters in the brain. Macular degeneration, a blinding eye disease that many people have never heard of, yet affects millions of Scotsmen. Macular degeneration causes the loss of central vision and is the leading cause of legal blindness in those over 55. Stroke risk doubles in the hour after you have just one alcoholic beverage. The heightened risk of ischemic stroke goes away within three hours. An empirical law of astronomy, Hubble's law, states that the velocity at which a distant galaxy is receding from the Earth is proportional to its distance from the Earth. It can be derived from models of the expanding universe in general relativity theory. A phased linear array is an antenna in which the phase of the feed to each element is adjusted so that the maximum radiation lies in an arbitrary direction to form a scanning array. I am Alan Manson. I started a, l a little voiceover business called Voices of Alan, where I do various voiceovers for whatever. I love it. I do voiceovers for whatever. I love it. Um, Whatever good, people need, I'll do. Good morning, my friend. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Um, I always tell people that um, in order to understand a business, uh, we have mm -hmm. to sit there and understand the person behind the business. And we met through um, one of my dear, she's like my sister friend, like my best friend from high school, which she, Tony is my, my sister. And so mm -hmm. Um, you, we were introduced because you married one of her best friends and I'm like, mm -hmm. I go, okay, this story gets better and better. But before we even get there, let's start from where are you from? Cause we hear an accent. Where are you yeah. from? And let's talk about who you are from, where you're from, your family to, um, you getting into the United States. Well, I'm from Edinburgh in Scotland. I lived there almost all my life. I've just been here for six years now. So I was over there a long, long time. And, and I was uh, an electrician when I was young. Uh, my father wanted me to get a trade at the time. He said, get a trade, you'll be sorted. So I got into that, hated it. I wanted to do electronics at the time. So eventually, long after my father passed, I, I went to college and I'd done a, a two-year course called an HND over there in electrical and electronic engineering and I'd done brilliant at it. it was up near the top of the class so I decided to go and do my degree in that and during the degree we started doing more software and I decided wait, wait, I'm going to pause you I'm going to pause you because okay. we're a little bit we're a little bit too fast forward yet so we're going to go rewind a lot more so okay. um your dad what was your what did your what did your parents do and do you have siblings I have two brothers. My father was an insurance man when he was younger, and then mm. he became a paramedic over in the UK. Okay. But then he, he got a nasty kind of case, and he decided he couldn't stand blood. <laughs> so well, he was still an ambulance man. So. Well, did you, I mean, why didn't, so he pushed you to go to find a trade. Why didn't you follow in his footsteps? Or was that not what you wanted to do? Um, I didn't really want to do that at the time, no. Mm -hmm. I was more kind of wanting to get into technical kind of stuff. stuff. I was mm -hmm. real area into electronics at the time back then. Okay. So I wanted to do that. And my mother was a nurse all her life as well, mostly in kind of the emergency room stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and then after my father passed when I was 19, she moved abroad to do nursing abroad. Okay. She was the United Arab Emirates, India, whatever it was, and just doing all that stuff. So I was kind of left at home to look after my little brother and my older brother was gone by then he was okay. working elsewhere uh, so how was, wait, wait. How was that all right so your mom is so you, and i'm sorry for your dad um because I, I my dad passed away and daddies are the best so dads are definitely like that guiding light for me mm -hmm. in my eyes um but you are now you're 19 years old 
Um, you're trying to figure out who you are. I mean, you're, I mean, you're a young adult. Your mom mm-hmm. is, she's, she's, she's saving, she's, nurses save the world. I mean, they, nurses are by far the best people in the world. And yet they're like teachers, they're not seen, but they do everything. Yep. And Absolutely. so your, your mom makes the decision to like literally traveling around the world, saving, saving and helping. Um, yep. And you, and you are that young adult where like, this is my time. This is my time. And now you have to sit there and take care of your little brother. How old is it? What's the difference between you and your brother? And what was uh, the job? It's a little bit two years difference. Two years. So, okay. So what were you doing one. for a job at that time while you were taking care of your brother and you're like, yeah, I was, an ele- I was doing my electrician's apprenticeship at that time. Okay. All so right. It was like a four year course. I love, I say this to people all the time. Um, one, people disregard trades and two, mm-hmm. apprenticeships, they've died. I mean, how did you yeah. find one and why are they so more prevalent overseas than they are in the United States? Because I think that by far you learn from a person that has done it farther for all yeah. their careers. Yeah, well, the, the apprentice show over there, you, you do practical work on, on block release and you do the theoretic, theoretical side of it as well. Mm-hmm. So it took really four years and working on the building sites, going to college, working on a building site, going to college. Yep. Uh, over here, you just do a three month little thing and that's you claiming to be an electrician. Yes. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> It, it, well, it, it, and it's scary. It's by the way, it's yeah. scary. Where someone comes mm-hmm. into, your, into your house and you're like, I go, and they're wiring things. I'm like, uh, how, you, you, well, hmm, I'm scared. Yeah. I'm, I'm scared. Yeah, it's even and worse so, for me. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's I know what what it's supposed where, to be. And well, that's the thing that I always in that I love so much. So my dad was we were from Haiti, and my dad was apprentice. He was like a um a, seam, uh, a tailor, and he taught us where we were like we want to have designer clothes, and he's like he goes all right. And he came back with two sewing machines. We're like, what is that? And he's like, Go for it. <laughs> and, but it was, it was the whole entire concept of everything that came from him was put right into us where I appreciate every single piece of clothing that I touch. I look at it. I, I, I appreciate because I know what goes into it. And so mm-hmm. when you're, I mean, I mean, obviously what's in you already, you have it. You're like, you could still do it if you wanted to. Correct. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, when you were there and you're like, now you're a person, but you don't like it. What was that thing that you didn't like? I mean, was it just, I mean, like, what, I mean, I, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but what was it that di- you didn't like? Because that was four years of your life committed to this. You're meeting people that are guiding you and they're seeing your talents because obviously you had the talent and the mm. know-how to like get through. But what was it that something that just didn't work for you? Well, over in Scotland, it's rather cold most of the time. <laughs> Uh, working in building sites in the yeah. cold and the rain and the snow and the ice is is not fun so that kind of put me off quite a lot <laughs> I as don't simple, like the cold as simple as can be it was the weather yeah. <laughs> and some of the people are just idiots and I have no patience for them <laughs> um one of the things I do love about the Scottish is like um you guys don't hold back the punches in regards of what you say which I love yep <laughs> <laughs> um so what happens then? So you're now, I mean, so you're at home, you're doing this, this is four years of your life. Um, mm-hmm. What, did you meet someone? Did you, like, what happened where you're like, okay, this is besides the weather. What was it mm-hmm. that you're like, what do I go to next? Uh, well, I did get married at the time as well during my apprenticeship and had my daughter, Lisa. Mm-hmm. And now my, my grandson, Lucas, he's 10 years old now. So I'm going to see him in a few weeks. I love, I love. Looking forward to that. That'll be good. Uh, where was I? Where, 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 how did you leave being from the electrician to now going into yeah, the Yeah, well, next as I said, I, I always wanted to do electronics. So after I, I got fed up with the electrician stuff, I was actually went to college while I was still working as an electrician to do my electronics thing. Mm-hmm. So I got my h and then I got my degree, and then I swapped over to software because I was enjoying that more. I've done what's called a postgrad diploma. It's just a, like a conversion course from the degree to another kind of degree. Mm. So I did that in software and then I immediately got a job with Honeywell where I worked for 13 years. Oh, yeah. And then I met Maria during that time. All right. So um, I see I'm, I'm constantly like weaving back. OK, so yep. you running too forward. You, you are. But I love it, though, because this is like this is my my job is to hear it and then to go back. So, yep. OK. You are now like an electrician, you're in school, you get a, a, your degree. Honeywell, I mean, great company, 13 yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I mean, I remember doing my MBA program. We visited the company. I was impressed. Mm -hmm. But again, I didn't work there. I was just going in as a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed MBA student. You're like, ooh, 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 very well. So Mm -hmm. so what what was your, I mean, 13 years is a lot. I mean, and I know Mm -hmm. that there are individuals that go in that the two years and out. Um, there's a individuals that are like, you know what, I'm going to grow through the company. What was your role? Um, what was it that you enjoyed? What was it that you didn't enjoy? Where do you believe that your career has gone because of Honeywell? Well, I kind of enjoyed the work, to be honest. Um, I got to run some teams to a limited extent, and I was senior software engineer, so I did get promoted at the time. Mm-hmm. And the work was okay. It was quite varied. I've done lots, uh, lots of different things. So yeah, it was, it was interesting. But then we started kind of outsourcing things. And yeah, it went downhill from there. Now you're in Scotland and you're outsourcing things. I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, you know, in the States, I mean, everything's outsourced. I mean, yeah. Things, everything is outsourced. And we're, during the pandemic, we're seeing how that has really hurt a lot. I mean, it's hurting the economy yeah, a lot. It doesn't work. It, it, it really doesn't. And yet no. the, the fixing of it is going to be very interesting because it's, it takes that many more years to build the infrastructure to actually get everything back into the location. So yeah. it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, when, especially when all the ships are able to like get back into all the ports. Yeah, um, that would help. <laughs> depend, de- depending on what's still alive or still useful in those ships because we have no idea what's yeah. in them who the hell knows yeah so so you're in honeywell you're like i mean you're advancing throughout um mm-hmm. 13 years is like I mean, I mean 13 years constant promotions which is fantastic um what was it that you learned out of that company that you are now doing now i mean like what when what like because you've evolved from being that electrician to being at honeywell gave the promotions mm-hmm. into where you are right now well, when I started at Honeywell, I was straight from university doing my course and I was completely clueless. <laughs> Didn't know anything. Oh, wait, Courses I mean, don't I don't... teach you anything. <laughs> All right. I've said this before where, again, when I look, when I started my business, um, literally it was like 2009 when the economy blew up in mm-hmm. 2008, 2009 when the, the Great Recession. And, I, and everyone's like, well, you have an MBA. I'm like, an MBA doesn't teach you how to start a business. It teaches you how nope. to grow a business. It doesn't teach you. So I'm like starting from it's ground zero. Block. With a lot of debt, yep, exactly. So you yep. get out, you get out, you look, you know nothing, but you got the job. Well, <laughs> I knew enough to get in, <laughs> and then I learned a lot. So, so from the people, I mean, obviously the people there were yeah, they're know, a good bunch. They're a good bunch. Okay, so yeah, I like so, the people. So the the, the job evolved. Um, mm-hmm. you kept on getting promotions. Um, Honeywell, thirteen years. What company are you with now? I'm with Ubiquia now. But what do they do? Uh, kind of smart city stuff. Their main product is just basically a light sensor on top of a street light. Okay. But it's very smart. It's got GPS on it. It's got LTE on it. So it monitors all the power usage, sends mm-hmm. it back to a central place where they do all the monitoring and everything, and try and cut the costs down. Is that like That's when we're watching... Product. Is that when we're watching TV and one of our silly NCISs or whatever's and they're like, and something happens and they can just tap into those sensors and they can actually see like cameras or. There's no camera on this sensor, but we do other products that does have cameras that uses the AI to monitor what's happening around it. See if there's pedestrians or whatever. Mm -hmm. So put the light on if they sense something. Now, could you have imagined that the, the kid that was in Scotland that literally was the electrician and now you're working on AI the technology has changed dramatically. What's that learning curve like from then to now? Because I mean, you start with mm-hmm. the sense, I mean, the, the essence of electric, electricity and technology, et cetera, and how it's evolved. Um, well, like, what do you think of it now? And what do you think that it's gonna be like in the future? Because I mean, I'm sure you've heard about the autonomous cars and the, the because of all the trucks and all the different, uh, the backlogs are gonna have autonomous trucks out there. I mean, you're you're well, living it. I'm sorry? It's only a matter of time before you get autonomous yeah. trucks, yeah. Oh, well, well MIT is already testing them, but of course we're yeah. scared because we're here in, in Massachusetts and we're like, you're testing it on the highways, but you can't bring them into small little, little like it's quintessential yeah, in town. Too dangerous, that, yeah. They've got to keep it on the highway, yeah. The main so road. what So what are your thoughts in regards of the evolution? Because I mean, you, I mean, because we read about it 
I mean, mm-hmm. we see it because we buy it, but you're doing it. So from the time that you started when you were younger, all the way through now, I mean, what are your thoughts overall with this, the, the evolution of the technology? Is it too fast? Is it too slow? Is it just right? <laughs> are people- That's fast. Yeah. It's fast. You're, you're constantly learning, learning, learning. It never stops. Every product, you just have to get into the data sheets and read all about the chip or whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's a lot. <laughs> So it's a lot. And yet, constantly and yet, evolving, constantly learning. Do you, and, and is that the part that you enjoy the, the newness of it? Or is it just like I go, it's just, yeah, I'm just rolling with the punches? Yeah, yeah, I kind of enjoy it. Although I'm, I'm kind of getting fed up with software slightly. <laughs> I've been doing it too long. It, it, now I'm it, changing it, things. It, it doesn't, wait, wait, what? It doesn't what? Now I'm changing stuff, doing my voice stuff. Well, the, well, uh, Alan, again, we are getting to that. I go, but we really wanted to understand the, the technology of it because, again, mm-hmm. you're now moving into that realm of what comes next after whatever I do. So you have the career, I mean, the professional mm-hmm. you, you have the professional mm-hmm. you, and then now you have the passion you. So mm-hmm. let's swing into the passion you. See, I wasn't, it's not like I'm ignoring it. We need to understand who you are and where you're, and, and how, you're how, how you're wired. So no, with you don't everything... Want to go it, with everything that you've done um, and everywhere you, you, I mean, you've lived in, you've only lived in two countries. Mm-hmm. Okay. Two countries, dramatically different. We'll call it the, well, the career. Saying that, I did live in England as well, if you class that as a separate country. It, it does. It's a separate country. It's a, it separate, is a country. separate country. So three so what, countries now. So wait, why were you there? Maria made me get another job, which happened to be in England. <laughs> That's why I left Honeywell. Okay, there, we, there you go. Okay, fish, fish, so, fish. so so we'll we'll get we'll, we'll we are going to get to Maria. Okay, wait. Okay, okay. So, um, so now you you you've three countries, a career path in technology in like elect. I mean, just like tech technology overall, mm-hmm. it's like expand. And now you decide to start something. Yep. So tell us about what you started and why did you start it my voice stuff i started it because certain people kept saying they love my voice <laughs> who are these certain so people I, uh, tony <laughs> was the first one <laughs> there have been other people as well been quite a few people even my boss that i'm working with now is saying i love my voice <laughs> so, i don't get it personally i hate my voice <laughs> well well all right the, the funny thing about it is i mean so i when i was younger um i had friends in scotland in glasgow and we used to go every, like, it, literally Christmas would happen and we'd all be on a, on a plane and we'd just, like, mm-hmm. fly to Glasgow and we'd just party like rock stars. Um, well, Glasgow's and so, the capital this party. Oh, man. my God. It was, it, was, crazy. it was ridiculous. I mean, it was just, New Year's there was just so much fun. Every, yeah. every single time that we went. So, yep. for me, I mean, I just love accents. I mean, I could go anywhere. I mean, again, being, like, uh, being first generation born, I was just raised. I mean, there was, like, these accents yeah. around me no matter where I go. My friends, I have like friends in all the different countries. Um, and I'm more, I always say that I don't have the American ear because I hear mm-hmm. you and I'm like, I can hear you. I can, I can understand what you're saying. I hope so. 90, 99.9% of the time when most people were like, I remember people yelling at my dad, like, excuse me, what? What? I'm like, he's not deaf. He just speaks a different language and it's an accent. Yeah. Just take the time to learn yep, and hear, exactly. hear him. Get used to it. Exactly. Get used to it. Um, mm-hmm. And so, I, I mean, I hear it and like, I go, okay, I go, this is, you know, an accent that I'm very familiar with. What is it about your accent or your voice? I mean, is it like, I mean, you have a, if it's a broad, it's like, I go, all right, you're talking, it's broad voice, but what is it that all of a sudden became that, hey, all right, I don't like it, but people like it. I'm going to start a business with it. Well, I thought if people like it, why not try and make some money out of it? So- Just like that. It, like most that. people most people have an idea but people don't do it i mean I mean, yeah. and voiceover work is hard yeah <laughs> as i'm learning <laughs> yeah so, so i started off i just thought maybe maybe an audio book or something mm-hmm. and then i started going into it and there's actually not much money in audio books <laughs> so then i've got the the broader voiceover world so i'm starting to get into all that stuff as well well, what is it about it? So, I mean, the audiobooks, which one, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, I love audiobooks. Um, I love hearing from the person that wrote the book. I mean, it's, it's my ultimate favorite. I just, I really don't like it when they hire someone. Uh, the mm-hmm. person has to be really, really good. So I'd rather hear from the actual, the, the actual individual. 
So what mm-hmm. is it that, and I'm, surpri- I'm surprised because you're reading an entire book and you don't make any money. That's shocking to me because you're reading an entire book. Yeah. Um, but what was it that, I mean, who's, who's gravitating towards you and how did you learn the, the, the ins and outs of it? Because I mean, I've used individuals for voiceovers for clients. So how are you? Okay. Is there a community Google, for- look into it. There's, there's lots of communities, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm with uh, several kind of Facebook groups and Instagram posts and whatnot with groups for that. Lots of different websites for actually getting work as well. There are people out there that are, so people that are listening to you right now um, mm-hmm. and they see that you're like, you're like, well, he's just very modest about what he's doing. I'm like, I go, which is you're for, for a very boisterous person that I know, you are very modest, but starting a business, a, a side business, it's hard because in the past, if you had a job and your boss found out that you had a job, a, another job, they're like, oh, they'd poo-poo it. Now it's the biggest thing where, oh my God, you can do both and you can do, I mean, like, yep. it's just, it's so amazing how much people are giving more power to individuals that are starting a business. Yep. But there are people out there that are listening to you right now that are, they have an idea and they're afraid to. So what was it that jumped for you in regards to how you wanted to do that? Because I mean, you could have just stayed Plain and simple, I do my job, I come home, I watch TV, I go for a walk or whatever. Why did yep. you even why did you even start this? Number one. Number mm-hmm. two, how do you start this? So because like there are people that just don't know, like what mm-hmm. how do I make that jump? So what was your why did you start this? And what was that initial jump of making sure making it a real business? Well, why I started it was to try and get out of software and do something different that was actually fun to do. Mm-hmm. which voiceover is to a certain extent or some stuff the audiobook that I just finished was good mm-hmm. that was quite fun and um, I forgot what I was doing again the we'll we'll in regards of like if someone is going to start it like I mean what where do we yeah. where does one go what does it what I mean <laughs> how do you when you're starting any business like what 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 advice would you give them in regards to if you're going to start something what would what was your first steps and or your th- first thought processes research 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 the three R's. So just get onto Google, find out what's going on in the industry you're interested in. Mm-hmm. Uh, just go from there and see what you need to do, what challenges are involved in it. And just go for it. Mm-hmm. Never be afraid to go for things. I think that's one of the biggest things, the fear. I mean, yeah. people, don't, yeah. people don't want to fail. Um, they don't nothing want to, to fear but fear itself. Oh, I lo- we love that saying. We love that saying because it's true. Um, you, you decide to go into a field where, again, someone says you have a great voice um, mm. and then you do the research. Now it's, it's a real business. I mean, you have a logo, which I, I which, yeah. which when I, I was like so excited, I'm like, I go, he has a logo. I go, yeah, come that's to not me. myself. <laughs> so, so I love that. So now how are you getting your first, like, I mean, I mean, when did it start actually? I'm sorry. When did the company start? And also when, how did you get your first job? Oh, I've actually just finished my first job. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I just got the uh, review from the author yesterday. Said mm-hmm. it was brilliant. Made her laugh and cry and bring all the characters <laughs> to life. I was quite pleased. <laughs> Wait, so you are you do multiple characters as well? Yeah, male and female. No. Yes. Okay. And all right, children. Wait. <laughs> All right, so one of my favorite books, Harry Potter, um, the gentleman that did it there, and he 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 said that he had um, re- recordings of every single voice, so that way he didn't forget it. So how did you? Yeah. How are you starting to do that? Where I mean, you like you have a book, you have all these different characters, mm-hmm. females, males, and children. How are you keeping up with the the like the hearing of it and keeping up with the same voice throughout the entire book? Uh, luckily, there was only kind of three or four main characters. So I mm-hmm. kind of remembered kind of their voices anyway. Mm-hmm. Some of the smaller characters, it doesn't matter too much as long as you get an idea because sometimes they're just in one chapter or sometimes cut a mm-hmm. few lines. So it doesn't matter too much about them. I just put any little kind of accent on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the main characters, yeah, I'm, I read through the whole book before you do anything. Yep. So you've got to yep. know what the story is about. And then I went through it again, making notes, highlighting all the different characters, trying to get an idea of what sort of voice is described in the book. Because sometimes mm-hmm. they say deep, deep voice or uh, soft female voice in one of the characters' cases. So, yeah, just 
go through, make notes, and then just get stuck in recording. When you, I mean, when you're, when you first came out, um, were you only focused on, I'm going to do a Scottish voice, or can you still actually like do different voices as well? I'm trying to do American at some point as well. How's that going? <laughs> I'm still learning, but it's getting there. <laughs> I can do a little bit of Irish. You fancy that as well? <laughs> Definitely do the Irish. I can do the Irish. There you go. A bit of Irish. <laughs> That's a, um. I whenever you're listening to and and this is the best part because you, when you're talking about your professional, you're like, I go, oh, just get like, just can we just get past this? We don't want to talk about my professional. And I can see the enjoyment. I I can see how you light up. And this is one of the things where whenever I see someone talking about what they're doing, their passion, the 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 excitement is very, very, very clear, which I do yeah. love. Um, well, learning accents and learning mannerisms of different cultures are very, very hard. So what is the process for you? Because now this is going to be your, this is your enjoyment. This is your passion. This is what you're doing on the side to keep you, keep the smile on your face in every single way. Yeah. But, but now it is really hard because you're having to learn different um, ac other accents, but also different regions of of different countries. So in Scotland, yeah. obviously there are different regions and different things that are said. In Australia, yeah. different like North, South, West. In America, same thing, North and South. So what is the process for you? Because actors and actresses talk about that all the time that they hire linguists and literally like have them like recite it, recite it, recite it. But once the yeah. movie is done, it's gone. But for you as a um, voiceover, those, those, um, those, you can't lose them because someone might just call you out of the blue and say, Hey, I need you for this country or this yeah. this time. So, what's the process? Okay, how have you been finding the process to do this? Because you're still so, learning, but what's yeah. what? I mean, what? How do you go about this? Well, most of the accents I just make up. So the English, the English, Scottish, Irish ones, are, I kind of could do them anyway. Mm -hmm. The American one is surprisingly difficult. I've been well, learning that for about eight or nine months. Got a voice voice coach, an American mm -hmm. accent coach, uh, just online, uh, Joel. He's good. I've learned a lot from him. But he, he's certainly correcting me a lot less these days, so I must be learning. <laughs> so how how long do you think before you get it down, or do you even hear it? Because you're, I mean, obviously you're having to say it. Are you even hearing any changes whatsoever, or do you feel like I go, this is like a, a losing battle for me? No, when I speak American, I could certainly hear the difference. Okay. So it's definitely not as Scottish. <laughs> I do love that. So I'm awful. glad you like it. <laughs> it's still a work in progress, though. Where Where do you want to go with the company? Because you you just started it. Um, you mm -hmm. have one good book under your belt. Um, what do you mm -hmm. want to do? I mean, who's who's your best client? I mean, that you'd love to work with. Um, and where do you want to? I mean, and do you want to? I mean, obviously, this is not just like a side thing. This is going to be this like con continuous like business. Yeah. Yeah. So so who do you want as your best client? Whoever has the money. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I... <laughs> it's a business. <laughs> You're the best. Well, it's, it's your passion business, which is good. And yes, the money is good. But I mean, but literally, yeah, who, who, who is it? In, I mean, do you, would you prefer authors? I mean, you said that it doesn't pay much, but like, would you prefer authors? Would you prefer commercials? Um, I mean, I, have, I had a woman that, did voiceover for our phone mess of our phone machine and so yeah. so what would what would be your ideal thing that you'd like to do consistently not saying that you're going to say no to anything i mean you're, you're going to say yes to as many things that could that come your way but what would be your ideal um uh situation where if you can get a lot of these that would put, that would make you really happy i say cartoon characters really yeah why? I mean, mind you, I'm seeing behind your shoulder. They're the extreme cartoon. fun for a start. Mm -hmm. You get lots of silly voices. So it's it's fun and they, they pay well. They, they do. So how do we so find you? That? I, I think that we need to start yeah, That's the hard that. part. Well, there's so many, um, there's so many young people that are doing, like they're doing cartoons, they're doing video games and things like mm -hmm. that. And they all have voices. And so I would, I would assume combining your world of technology and then your voiceover, they, they would come together some way, somehow. Well, I use technology to record, that's about it. 
So I, so I think that that's one of the things where, in my mind, I would think that the, we'll call it, of the, the entire, the, this whole entire young group of individuals that are looking for more technology, like I mean, more, I mean, they're creating more videos um, mm -hmm. and those videos are having those characters. And I think that that would be a phenomenal spot for you. Yeah, yeah, I've often thought about filming my dogs and stuff and putting voices to them, but I've not got around to it yet. So I've got two dogs now. I think that, all right, so now that brings you back to home where, mm -hmm. all right, so again, you have the cartoons behind you, which we love. You have the two dogs that you're voice recording, which of course, I think that alone. You should I'd like to do that. I've not done it yet. I've not had time. Oh, oh my God. I think that that right there would get, that would get you attention because if you just did that yeah, on YouTube, that would be amazing. Yeah, that's huge. That would be that would be funny in every single or way. The TikTok life or something these days. Wait, what kind of dogs are they? Uh, just rescue dogs. Just a mix of everything. And I'm sure they have tons of characters to them. Characteristics oh, yeah. to them. Well, Anne is the oldest one. She's about six now. Mm -hmm. She's kind of mellowing out a little bit. But Raki is, is the newest one. Just got him a, a month or two ago. He's crazy. <laughs> I, I think Sweet they should be all... Crazy. The second you do it, I'm ready for it. I like I'm ready to yeah. kind of like push that. I, like, I that that would make me very very happy. Yeah. Um. And then you have a beautiful bride. Mm hmm. Indeed. Um. How did you? All right. So like going backwards, like a little bit more in regards of mm -hmm. you have the two dogs, two rescue dogs. You are now living in Florida. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. Is it from Honeywell that got you Florida? London. So you were in London. No. You came over. That wasn't London. It was uh, Yorkshire. Actually, I worked. Okay. Uh, right. VPG Systems in Yorkshire. I worked there for two years before we moved over here. Okay. So I went from Honeywell to there to here. And then you met the beautiful bride? Well, I met her when I was at Honeywell. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. So you've, you've known each other forever. Yeah, we've just done our ninth anniversary. Oh, yay. Happy anniversary, which I just love. Um, and, and I, I finished and I did... my book on that very day. The what? I finished the book on my anniversary. It's a romantic novel, so... It's... <laughs> Did she, read it too? Did she read it as well? She doesn't understand me. <laughs> we have fun with the voices. I, I think she doesn't. I think, well, she, I'm, well, again, both of you guys have accents. And so yep. when you guys are, when you guys are talking and you, I'm sorry, when you guys are arguing, you guys yeah, hear each other. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, go, that must be really interesting right there. Um, oh, it's fun. Yeah. During the, I mean, sorry, going back. So this is me going back and forth, back and forth. Um, yep. When did you start the company? Just at the beginning of the year. Okay. So first year. First year. Pandemic, mm -hmm. March 2020. You're working and the, the world shuts down. Um, mm -hmm. you, you are working from home or did you have to go to work? No, I work. I've got my recording booth right behind me. Okay. So now you're, up here. You're, you're here and you're recording and things like that. So how was it for you? Um, and also just like the buzz of everything, because everybody was now looking for eBooks and everyone was now mm -hmm. looking for recordings of something. I mean, how was the buzz in regards of this industry that you're in right now during the pandemic? Because I mean, we're still in the pandemic and it's like a, mm -hmm. we, we go back and forth, back and forth, different variants and things like that. But even at the, 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 the high point of the pandemic, what was it like for you working um, your, your, your traditional business? Mm -hmm. um, your professional, your job that you've create, you're creating, and just home life in itself. How was it for you during the pandemic? It's not affected me at all, to be honest. Really, in, I've always in, been a home person, so I, I like to be at home. I don't like to go out and about, especially having to wear masks and everything, which really annoys Maria. So, but she but being, so did it make did it make both your jobs easier or harder? It didn't affect my job because. We, I kept working throughout the pandemic with my last mm -hmm. job um, at AccuPlace before yep. I started with Ubiqua yep. because yep. they'd done kind of medical product kind of thing as well. So class is an essential business. So I just kept mm -hmm. going, just kept going to work every day. So it didn't affect me. And, and then when you started, when starting a business, again, yep. you, have to get, you have to get everything set up. So I mean, again, mm -hmm. everything is like online pretty much. Yeah, I bought everything online, got delivered to the house, set it mm -hmm. all up. Don't have to interact with anyone physically. So, yeah, didn't affect me. <laughs> I, I think that's one of the things that people are not understanding how easy it would be. So, I mean, even with the, the blue curtain, which is a soundproof, I mean, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so people not knowing what to buy because there's so much noise out there in regards of like, there's just equipment after equipment after equipment after equipment. 
of things yep. to get. So how did you even know what works and what didn't work? Or did you just make tons of mistakes of buying things? And you're like, oh, that's not working out and getting rid, getting rid of it. Occasionally, yeah. But most of the things, just research again. Mm -hmm. uh, you just find out the best microphone you need, whatever your budget is. You don't have to get really, really expensive stuff. You can start out with a couple hundred bucks. Okay, right, uh, so hopefully. so that well, that right there, a couple hundred bucks. People just people just assume the best mic is like seven hundred dollars, or the best this no. or the best that. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, the wife keeps texting me. Stop it. <laughs> Because my phone's connected to the PC, so I just keep beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> Very annoying. So, so in regards to the equipment, I mean, what is what's the main things? Like, if someone if someone wants to start a, a voice voice over business or just a recording of some sort, what do they get? Like, I mean, what would what would you start them with, basic level? Well, the most important thing is the room space. So you've got to have a decently treated room that's reasonably quiet. It doesn't have to be perfect, but mm -hmm. there's no such thing as perfect soundproofing. So mm -hmm. just a reasonable room, hopefully away from traffic. I've got this window here, so it's a nightmare trying to record. I was up at two o'clock this morning recording. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of half asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Not fine. <laughs> but I'm up at four o'clock usually every morning, do some recording mm -hmm. and auditions for parts and commercials, whatever. Okay. So it, it's exhausting, and then I'm after six i'm heading to work for eight nine hours whatever it is two two and a half hour drive each way or both ways how are you getting your voice in a place where it's like i mean at four o'clock in the morning i mean i'm, I'm up at 4 25 every single morning because between 4 25 and 6 30 is quiet like i have international clients yep. and it's just the world is quiet but i'm not talking i'm just like getting things done yeah. how are you getting your voice at that point where you're giving it your all at that early in the morning you have to drink water Okay. Drink, drink, drink. Hydration, hydration. You've got so you to have the. No, go ahead. Well, in this case, it's chamomile tea with honey. So you have your tea, you have mm -hmm. your soundproofing um, sheet. Yeah, and a big jug of water. Your jug of water, staying hydrated. Mm -hmm. Then you have your, what microphone would you suggest? Um, the good thing is you don't need lighting because in light, like, I mean, hey, you're, it's a voice, which is great. So what yeah. light, so what microphone? Because I think that's, even for me, where I just use the microphone from the computer and everyone's like, why am I, yeah. you can't, I'm like, you know what, I, honestly, for me, I'm not, I'm, I'm here to make sure that we're hearing you properly. So, but yeah. someone that wants to start doing that, what would you suggest? Yeah, well, as I say, you don't have to spend a fortune. I mean, this one here, the one I'm using just now, it's just a, awesome. It's not, it's a hundred bucks or something. But that's not your, not I mean, expensive. the second you, the second you pulled it over the voice difference. So like, yeah, well, you, I'm right into it then. No, that, so you're out the way of the camera, but that's, that's, that sounds really, really good. So an uh, individual that is yeah. like literally like taping, you want to get a microphone, you want to invest, yeah. you want and to invest. That one's in okay, it. but it's not really great for voiceover work. Why is that? It's, it's not bad. You can get better yeah. ones than this. It's just not got quite got the quality. Uh, it's just a USB one. So you want, um, uh, a reasonable microphone with an ex proper XLR cable okay. and a uh, little voice or a little adapter cable, adapter box. There, there are so many people that are um, looking for the next big thing for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and they are spending, 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 spending. And then before you know it, they're, they peter out. Meaning that uh, during the pandemic, people are at home. They were, if they weren't on TikTok, they were creating a podcast. And now that the world is open, like the, well, the country, not the world, but now that mm -hmm. more locations are open, they just drop it, it's all done. And so mm -hmm. that leaves all this equipment and all this like content that's just out there. Um, how do you not get lost into, lost within that noise of people thinking, oh, are you just doing it for a moment or are you gonna be here for a while? Because if we're gonna depend on you, yeah. we want you to be around for quite some time. How do you get not get lost? Because you just said you did all this research, you found all these people, and all these people are talking, but which ones are the serious ones and which ones are not so much? So on Facebook, you really can get lost on that. Yeah, I try to listen to the people that have been in the industry a long time because mm -hmm. they know what they're doing. So I try to get the get them, get information from them. So okay. I've got Facebook posts with some of them and everything. So I've got some private groups for voiceover artists that you can join. Okay. So get right. information from them and ask, ask other people in the business. 
where do you think the industry goes from now? Because less and less people are um, hiring big, huge firms. Um, less and less people are more, I'm sorry, more people, more companies, corporate, middle, small, are now trying mm -hmm. to create their own content. Where mm -hmm. do you feel that the industry will go from this point on? Because the pandemic had everyone thinking differently in regards to building content. Mm -hmm. So where does a voiceover actor go, come in, fall, fall into that, uh, that realm? Well, to be honest, COVID did not really affect the voiceover business. It's always kind of been going the same direction. So going for, it's not big companies doing recording anymore. It's people at home with their own setup. That's the way it's been going a long time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's, it doesn't really affect things with big companies. They, they, they outsource as well. Okay. So the, the outsourcing is a benefit for you. Mm -hmm. um, the individuals, it doesn't matter what size of the company, benefit for you. Um, mm -hmm. It's just get, definitely getting, in regards to the, 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 the content that you want to create, um, doesn't matter, but obviously we want to be in the um, uh, animation world. That would be that's, nice, yeah. yeah, that's what we're, you're growing towards going to the animation yeah. world. Um, what else would you want to do? What else would, where else would you like to go with this? And, and also how many accents do you think that you want to, I mean, at the end of the day, how many accents would you like to be able to pull off? Well, all of them really, but that's <laughs> not really feasible. Well, realistically, how many would you like to do? Um, well, the American one's kind of the main one, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Just general American, they call it. Okay. But I've been playing with a little bit of Southern as well. But I've got an yeah. acting coach as well. I see her once a week. She Gen says I'm doing really well. Well, it's funny. General American is like, sounds so boring, but... I yeah, but it's kind of <laughs> accentless. So it could be anywhere in the US that's speaking it. They call it general American. So that's okay. what most people are looking for. General American. Okay, good to know. Yep. Good to know. All right. Yep. Um, and then um, in regards to, uh, will this be the company that brings you to, into retirement? I hope so. And I, think about voiceover as well. There's no retirement age. It doesn't matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. You can just keep going until you drop if you want. Well, then your voice will age though. Like, I mean, like the, even the, the toning of a, no? Yep. Well, yeah, your voice will age, but there might still be a part for you. As long as you still the work there, then you can keep doing it. I love it. I love that yeah. you even just thought of just starting this out now, um, knowing that it's going to grow with you versus mm. versus some people just wait till they retire and then they start something. I mean, I've had people come to me, they're like, yeah. I'm going to retire in a year. What should I do? And I'm like, uh, what do you like to do? <laughs> exactly. I mean, like I go, like that's, it's shocking to me where people have no idea and then they go into full mm. panic and then they sit there like, well, I'm just going to sit and watch TV. And I'm like, well, you're 55 Man, years old or 65 boring. years old. I can't old. do that anymore. It, well, I used to be able to watch TV, but no. It's, I mean, I don't own yeah. a TV. Um, I stream everything and I stream whenever I'm doing something. Like I'm folding clothes, yeah. I'm streaming something. But oh yeah, sitting in front of a TV where everyone's like, what time do you go to bed? I'm like, I don't know. Sometimes it's nine, sometimes it's 10, sometimes mm. it's midnight. It's depending on what I'm doing. They're like, are you watching a show? I'm like, no, no. Like that's the last thing I want to do. I have some show. shows I watch. <laughs> you, you know, I watch these. I I literally watch things after the fact. Um, yeah. So I like, I see them years later. I don't watch later live TV, Sally. No, no, I don't watch. No, I don't watch any. The press and it's all news. Well, I worked in the media, so yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I would it. never leave the house. I would never leave the house. I oh know, my god. Maybe. All right, so um, I I've taken too much of your time already, but I just really wanted to understand what you're doing, how you're doing, but more so, more so that you actually decided to actually, you decided to actually add more value to who you are as a person. And I want to literally constantly show people where it's never too late to do mm -hmm. anything. Um, you Absolutely. can always start something from anything from like when, but mostly passion. So this is what I heard from you. You gotta have the passion for what you're doing. You enjoy it. Um, That's fun. Li listening to people where people say, hey, you have a great voice. You're like, what? All right, what mm. am I going to do with this? Okay, but, then. <laughs> well, yeah, but the thing is, like, but enough people saying it to you, which is good, and you heard them, because mm. sometimes people say that you have a quality, and most people like, just ignore, like, all right, whatever. Well, people yeah. have been saying that for me for years. Well, what are you going to do with it? So you didn't wait yep. too long, which is great. <gasps> no. And then you just did the oh. research. 
They have a back. <laughs> here we go. Here, they're like, here I go. Here we, we're Rocky. <laughs> Rocky. Here he comes. They're both coming. I love Here's it. Come on. Here's the little hello. monster. Oh, oh, hello. All right. Is that the is that the young one? That's the young Racky crazy boy. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Annie will not let me pick her up, so I can't get her up. Okay. I can see her though. I can see her. She's head. down there. Yeah, she's heading for the door again. All right. So no, you know what? I would love to have a video with Aid with him talking. Okay. That that would be um, that would be so much fun. I'll work on it. Okay, good. I look forward to that. You um, can't do that, Reggie. <laughs> but all right. So the research, all right, so going back to like what I heard, researching, 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 getting into communities of people that are experts in the field. Just don't, just don't just hang out with people that just say that they're doing it, but find people that are actually experts in the yep. field. Um, I'll get what some other training. lessons? Get some training. Oh, the training. So you yep. have an act. You have an acting coach as well as a voice coach. I have a voice coach, an accent coach, and an acting coach. Wait, a voice, an accent, and wait, why can't the accent and the vo voice be the same? The accent is just for the accent, just to get an American accent going. The voice coach is, is voiceover expert that teaches you how to do voiceover. Okay, the, well, with the accent um, coach, does he or she do multiple or just the American one? And then you'll bring in someone for another accent. I don't think he does other accents, but he's basically American, I think. Okay, that, I think that's, so. that's, that's fantastic. Now, yeah. see, now I'm, in, now I'm intrigued. I'm like, where, I wonder what it takes to be an American coach. Like, I mean, I'm a coach, but to work with the media and things like that, but it, like, I would be yeah. very interesting. Well, I think yeah. he, speaks, he speaks different languages as well. So it's not just the accent, I think. Oh, I love that. He's got other jobs. And so you are 100% investing in yourself to invest in your craft. And that's yep. another thing where, the next thing where people, all right, so they don't know what they want to do. Um, mm -hmm. They can't figure out what their passions are. They literally, once they decide, they just kind of like flail and they just join all different groups. And number, and the last one is they never invest in themselves. They don't think about yeah. putting that money towards making sure that you're the best at what you do. And I think that's the big, and the, and the equipment, making mm -hmm. sure that you have the right equipment for whatever yeah. you're doing. It's so got all to be these, reasonable quality, yeah. Yeah, so all these things that I'm hearing from you is a lot of things that people don't do. And so this is where mm -hmm. hearing it from you means a lot because you literally have like walked through the steps of things that you need to do to make sure that you're actually yeah. selling in what you're, what you're, well, it's what been you're almost a year since I started and I've only just started really working. Uh, the rest what, of it has what, just been training, training, training and learning. How did you not jump off ship? Cause look, you just had a year. Yeah. Yeah. It's been busy. No, no. But how did you, how did you not jump off ship? Cause most people would get frustrated and say, like, this is taking too long. I wanted to just, yeah. like, at the beginning, you're, you're, you're funny, but it's true. I want to make money. But you just, like, invested a lot. And you, you just took a year of your life to do this. Most people would yeah. be impatient. While working so, full time as well. The what? While working full time, too. While it's, working full time. Oh, I'm sorry. And while, really busy. and while being a husband and a father. And that as well. Yeah. So, yep. so you're doing all these things, and you still were committed to doing it. So I'm going to put the mm -hmm. last one as in commitment to yourself because mm -hmm. if you're not committed into yourself and if you're not doing all the work it doesn't even matter yeah exactly all right got to get out good. there get it done get it done all right so see look at without you with like literally me pulling me pulling the words out of your mouth but still all the great tips because i heard them very clearly about mm -hmm. specific mm -hmm. things that you've done to get to this point and so this is where i tell people this isn't the first conversation i'll have many more conversations with you because depending on what's going on in the world, depending on what's happening in your industry, I want to literally mm -hmm. get to that point where people will engage. Oh, wait, of course, I have, the, I have two more questions. I have the last okay, question, okay. but I have AI. You talked about how the, the technology in your real world has changed over, over, over and over again. AI is like a humongous, humongous obstacle. There's a pros and cons because there's a lot of individuals that are now using technology to fake someone else's words. And so, yeah. so now there's voiceovers with that. So where do you think that's going? Because you are now, this is coming on both, both of your worlds, your profession, your, your professional and your passion, your passion work. So how do you think that's going to fall into play? Because it's getting scarier where you see a lot of the 
scammers, it's the holiday season, scammers are up, like it's, it's a billion dollar business to be a scammer. Yeah. And so now you have AI putting into play and then you have now voiceovers too because someone could be doing a voiceover and not realizing what it's being used for. So how yeah. does that play for you? And now a message from our sponsor. Since 2017, the Foundation for Business Equity has existed to support Black and Latinx-led companies in reaching their full potential by providing access to critical growth tools that include expanded networks, capital, and markets. To learn more about the Foundation for Business Equity, FBE, visit fbequity.org. And now, back to our guest. Well, AI can't really produce voices that well. Certainly not in the voiceover industry. People, people will sense it. They'll know. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can tell. AI, fake voices are not that good. There, there are kind of companies that try and do it. But I don't think they get very far. People want an actual voice with emotion and whatever. Fit a feeling behind it. So I'm going to assume. Company. So well, I'm going to assume that it's not where it is. It's it's not a problem now, but it's something that could we be should... in the future because AI is always improving. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, All again, that stuff's crazy. Oh my God, it's like it's 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 crazy. And um, being in being in Massachusetts. MIT is like, you know, a short drive away and yep. they're creating things over and over again and they're on the news and I'm like, yep. oh, I'm scared, but I'm intrigued by you. Yeah, I'm I mean, interested. Those, yeah, those I robots, that, the robots can, that can dance and things like that, which is- Yeah, I think that's awesome. I'm like, I, I love it. I mean, those robots, yep. I, robots I do love, um, but when it comes to like looking like a person and now talking and sounding properly like a person, that's where yep. I'm like, mm, Yeah, that's saying, kind of it. It's I'm not tricky. saying no. Yeah, I'm not saying no, but I'm not saying yes. Yeah, it's, if it's used properly, then that's your problem. But there's always people that abuse any technology. Um, how much work can you do at the same exact time? I didn't ask that question. What do you mean? Um, what's what's the capacity of how much work can be done for a voiceover um, actor? As it, as in, let's just say in a, in a day in a day. I go, mm -hmm. so you have records for day. How many do you do before your voice says, we're done? Yeah, a, a full day, you're going to be struggling by the end. As long as you keep lubricated, lots okay. of water, okay. then, yeah. But we'll get tired by the end of the day. Okay. Uh, I think that I don't use my voice all day because it's kind of part-time, so I've not got to that stage yet. Okay. But yeah, that will happen to me in the future. I'll have to watch what I'm doing. Well, when you were doing the book, how many hours did you put in the book before you said, like, I go, the, the characters are no longer there? Yeah, well, I'm only doing a couple of hours in the morning from four till six, and then I'll be a, a bit at night if I get a chance with the neighbors. Okay. Because they're a bit noisy upstairs. Okay. All right. Because that, that's oh. one of the things where I didn't, yeah, I didn't so know. Maybe three or four hours at the most. Because when you're hearing, um, uh, three or four hours is a lot. Because when There's you're hearing. There's a gap in between. Oh, okay. Good. So two in the morning, three at night, if I'm lucky. Oh, well, well, that, no, that, that makes more sense because when you're hearing the, um, uh, actors or Michelle Obama's and the, I mean, the Barack Obama's when they're reading their books, their books are pretty big. And so mm -hmm. how long do you think that, I mean, uh, how long does it take overall for, I don't know, a 400 page book? Well, that book wasn't, I just finished, wasn't far off 400 pages and it took me several months. Okay. But really it should take a, about three weeks if you're doing it full time, two to three weeks if you're doing it full time. But that's a lot of, I mean, that's a lot on your voice. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a lot. Um, yeah. So I'm assuming with your coaches and your training, they're training you how to keep that voice right where it's supposed to be. Just like a singer, you're, you're keeping those vocal cords, yeah. not, not only lubric lubricated, but also exercising them. Yeah. You, you get some tongue twisters and stuff. My acting coach has given them. They're quite funny. Okay. So just to get things moving and then it's different people have different techniques of doing things just to warm up the voice. You should always warm up before you start just getting stuck in. And and as a quiet person that just like, I mean, you're, I mean, you're not too quiet, but as a person that's just like, I go, I'm yeah, homebody. I'm All right. So homebody, I'm quiet. Um, mm -hmm. How does that, how does one just, I mean, do you just go around the house singing or exercising your voice or doing these tongue twisters I do out funny loud? voices. <laughs> I do sing as well. <laughs> I sing around the house. Maria hates it. <laughs> I think Wait, I'm not you? bad, but she, no, she doesn't like it. <laughs> 
bless her heart. I know. <laughs> bless, you have the. She can't sing, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> She's tone deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you tell her that? Yeah. Oh, again, brutal. Brutal. <laughs> the, the, oh, the Scots are brutal, Cold but honesty. so entertaining. <laughs> All right. I got my last question for you. My very last question that I ask everyone. Okay. Um, if you had, and, and this is the way that I end no matter who I'm talking to and, and no, okay. no matter how many times I a actually talk to you. Um, if you had your personal ask and a professional ask, two different answers, my friend, two different answers. If I had a personal ask and a professional ask of anyone that is listening to you right now, what would be your personal ask and what would be your professional ask? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea <laughs> you have to have answers you have to i mean like what, again personal and professional ask i have no idea <laughs> i just want to get on with things <laughs> this work well for, that's for all business, i ask for, for health to for, work for your business, for your business specifically, what would you like for your for the business? Like you look at the one customers. year old, get more customers. Okay, um, get more customers for your professional. I'll we'll mm -hmm. take that. What would you okay. like for your What would you like for your personal? For my business to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it all for free right now. No, you you didn't just do the book for free, did you? Well, I don't know how oh. much I'm going to earn from it. Well, well, all right. Well, you, you, got to, you got you got to start somewhere. You got to start mm -hmm. somewhere. So this is good. So for so I'm going to like again bring it back. So you, for your for your professional, you'd mm -hmm. like to get more work. For your personal, yeah. you'd like to get paid more for your work. Yeah, that'll do. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Alan. It is always a pleasure. I mean, the last time at yeah. last time Alan and I saw each other, we were doing a um. It was a obstacle course, a Christmas obstacle course. Yeah. It was the last time one. that I saw you. Other than that, thank that you for face. Yeah. Oh my God. I love that. That was like so much. That fun. almost killed me. Though. That was, I I saw people cheating. People were cheating those during that yeah, obstacle course. Yeah, that would be me. <laughs> that that was that was a really, really good time. So yeah. I look forward to doing Tony that one day. Keith made me cheat though. It wasn't me. <laughs> I, they oh, forced me. Oh no, I went the I went the route because I mean as a runner and as a marathoner, I went the I, I went the actual route. And it was hard. Yeah. It's not a very easy obstacle course, but I enjoyed yeah, it. I know. <laughs> That's almost coming. I, I don't think that Tony and Keith are gonna enjoy that you called them out on cheating. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they're gonna enjoy that at all. But oh, well. Alan, Just my friend, thank again. you. This is true. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time out of your morning to sit here and talk. I really appreciate it. No problem. I go and I know that you're low key shy but still we're gonna sit there and get you more i mean like yeah, I mean, a lot better than i used to be in the past i would not even speak to you i would run away <laughs> why oh when i was young i was chronic shyness i couldn't speak to girls at all man it's terrible but yet you were married twice and you have a child yeah well i don't know how i managed the first one that was the difficult <laughs> See, there's something about you, that quiet, that quiet, sultry type. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> See, now look, look at that. You're like warming up. I mean, if, if I edited these videos, which of course I don't, I would put the end yep. at the front and then like, yep. and then the, end, the front <laughs> at the end where like I go, oh, he's tired. Maybe, no, you just gotta warm up. <laughs> yeah, well, that as well, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. All right, send my love to Maria, please. I will do. All right. She's, she's working Bye. with Danny just now. Try to sell Wait. stuff. Oh, see, we all, we're all working. When we're, we're all working. <laughs> Little market stall selling jewelry. Ooh. Hmm. Next person I'm going to interview. Danny's little business. Ooh. All right. See? Wait. So Danny's doing the business in your mom and um, Ana Alicia. I don't know. Maria's helping her. Maria Alicia. She's helping her. So helping her with the sales or helping her with? For the sales, yeah. Oh, down at the market now. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. So we wait, she's at, there you go. she's at the market and she's texting you. Yep. So I wonder what I'm doing. Speaking to women. Very jealous type. And she'll she'll see this. 
you look, I go like, what were you guys talking? You guys, you guys, was this a recording? Was it really? This was work. Yeah. This was work. I'll let us see it. This is work. All right, my friend. Thank you so very much. You're welcome again. Anything. Bye. See you later. Edinburgh's Cafe Modern One has a new look and menu. Seafood and game are the order of the day. And there are few places in the country where you'll find fresher fish dishes or richer flavours. Our young people are experiencing increased rates of mental health issues. Our youth of colour especially are facing the additional trauma of systemic racism. Group practice is a family medical practice based in Stornoway and Habust Ness. We provide minor surgery, antenatal shared care, contraceptive and sexual health services. Where is it written that the big car has to be boring? That a car can't be both elegant and affordable? Take a ride in a Kia and see for yourself. Go to Parks Kia in Coat Bridge. Soak up the sun on a white sand beach on Nassau Paradise Island in the Bahamas. Book a round trip flight and at least four nights and you can save £250 on the package.